You were just standing there with the wind in your golden hair. Didn't know you were. 22 years and we're making up a at home melting pot experience. We got our inserts for our fondue so that you don't have to wash the fondue pot after every course. Our Rice Krispies made for the dessert. Our cooking style, what is it? Mo Moho. Moho. And what's in this over here? Is this for the cheese? That's for the cheese. This is gonna be for the cheese. Um, We've got the lobster and chicken out here for the meat course. We've got our cheese that's coated with cornstarch that that sauce will go in and melt here in a bit. We've got our filet. Some bread cut up. Some cheesecakes and other desserts in there. We're gonna get our fondue pots out. We just got this fondue pot because our go-to restaurant, the melting pot, is still closed. So are they closed now? The well they might have opened, but we didn't know when we got this. Oh well, and I think we decided that we want one for the road. And then it's kind of nice to be able yeah. to just do it home. So because... we can do it while we're traveling. Mm -hmm. Or we can do it at home here and tease the dogs. All right, you've probably seen us do a seafood boil. I think we did it at Port Aransas for the Super Bowl last year. That was probably the first video we did on that. And then uh, later during the summer, we actually did one at my parents' house. Um, and we always do it in the style of melting pot. So Chris and I have always enjoyed and loved the melting pot restaurant. So we decided to finally, it's about time now, our friends at It's About Time Now, that it was about time to share with you some of these recipes because it's a delicious meal. And a few weeks ago, before our 22nd anniversary, which was yesterday, we decided that we wanted to go to melting pot. But because of all this craziness that's going on, we weren't sure if they would open and have inside seating to give you the melting pot experience. So we decided to get us a fondue kit, an electric fondue kit. We figured we can do it here at home. We can take it with us and uh, have a smaller style seafood boil when it's just me and Chris, or even if it's a few friends, this fondue set will kind of support that. So we're gonna walk you through some of the recipes, review how the sauces turn out, how the cooking style turns out, and how the dessert turns out. All right, so if you've been to the melting pot, you know the first course is the cheese dip. So we're going to work on making the cheese dip now. What cheese dip are we making tonight? Same one we did last night? Yes, but without the cornstarch. It's like a, a beer cheddar um, yes. cheese. And you got the recipe online somewhere, right? Yeah, it's, they call it a copycat. Yeah, the copycat cheese. recipe. We, we started with copycat recipes for melting pot for the sauces. They turned out pretty good. Um, and then Chris found some others for a cooking style and for the cheese and that type of stuff. Um, last night, actually this is the second night we're doing it. So we did it last night for our anniversary. We had leftovers, so we're doing it again tonight. Bonus. You don't get that when you go to the melting pot. Um, so last night we did the cheese recipe as it was listed and it called for cornstarch with the cheese and it was too thick. So we're going to try it without the cornstarch tonight and see if that makes it a little bit uh, better consistency. Along with Tillamook cheese. And we're also using Tillamook cheese, which we are off to the Tillamook factory soon if it opens up. It's closed right now. Hopefully next month when we're out there, it will be open. All right, so continuing on the cheese sauce, last night we made, per the recipe, two ounces of Swiss cheese and six ounces of cheddar. Two ounces of Swiss, six ounces of cheddar, we grated it up, we added cornstarch to it, uh, and then we mixed it with the other sauces that Chris will get going here in a pan in a second, and I'll tell you what those are. But tonight we're actually going to go the easy route, and Chris loves Tillamook cheese and ice cream, and we got a Tillamook uh, three cheese blend here. So some beer, some garlic, some mustard powder, some Worcestershire sauce, some cheese, and we're gonna skip the flour and the cornstarch. And we're also using a different type of beer. But I could feel it with a very heartbeat Every time that eyes wouldn't meet Didn't know back then And even in my wildest dreams I didn't think that we could be together Am I living in a fantasy? Or is this for real? Never thought that you could fall for someone like me. I just doubled the 
liquid, so now I gotta. So once again, even without the cornstarch, it was thicker than what we experience normally at melting plot. So mm -hmm. melting plot. <laughs> It was thicker than what we experienced in the melting pot, so Chris added double the liquid to make it more consistent with what we experienced in the melting pot. Right, so it, the actual recipe does not call for green onions, but I love green onions, so we're going to add some green onions to the mix here. Saving some for the cooking stuff, yeah. right? Put some of the green onions in. One thing to be aware of with the Cuisinart fondue is they give you a tiny cord. So you're going to need an extension cord just about anywhere that you set it up on a table, unless you happen to have a table that has an outlet at it. But ours is not very far away and we still need an uh, extension cord. stove, you move it to your warmed up water and your fondue pot and serve it with your veggies and breads and whatever you want to eat cheese with. Some people like apples. We skipped those this time. We're going to try out the first course. Happy anniversary, baby. We whacked out the cheese. The next course is usually a salad at Melting Pot, but we are going to skip the salad tonight and go right to the main course. Yeah, we did a good job <clears throat> if you have veggies left over, save them because they can go in the cooking style for us extra veggies, especially mm -hmm. the carrots and broccoli. Yes. We've been stocking up for our grandkid trip starting here in just a little while, so that's why all this stuff is on our table. Would not normally be the case. So we finished the cheese, the cheese was good, and now we are going to make the cooking style. So Chris is actually, you're gonna make that all right in that pot? Yeah. Okay, so for the cooking style, you make that right in the pot so it has more heat. Uh, since you're cooking meats, you want them to have a better heat than the chocolate and the cheese need. So you're gonna make that right in the fondue pot itself. No, it's not. Adding some garlic. We use some chicken bouillon, some orange juice, cilantro, cumin, jerk seasoning, black pepper, lime juice, and garlic. This is called the moho style, right? Mm -hmm. The only thing we add to it that's not on the recipe is some green onions that we'll add at the end, just because I love green. <laughs> That's nice. What did you drop in there? The thing broke off. Oh, you don't want to put the plastic tab in there. We don't measure precisely when we cook usually. And it usually comes out fantastic, so why change a good thing, right babe? Mm-hmm. Oh, could you get me the lime out of the fridge? We're using fresh lime out of a plastic container. <laughs> lime concentrate. Or it's, it's lime juice, right? It's it is. It's 100% lime juice. 100% lime juice. It's just pre-done for you. And after you get all the ingredients in, you just bring it to a boil, right? Mm -hmm. Once it's to a boil, you can start putting the veggies in and start cooking It's good meats. to put your potatoes in first because they take yeah. the longest. Potatoes first, normally. We got some carrots, so it's probably take. Normally, you don't put carrots in there, I don't think, but we had some extras here, so we're gonna, we're gonna put carrots, broccoli, <clears throat> mushrooms, and potatoes in for our veggies. And then for our meats, we've got chicken, steak, and lobster. lobster. Melt some butter for the lobster. Let's talk sauces. 
So one sauce is a teriyaki sauce. It's fantastic if you mix this with the um, what is it called? Curry. Curry. There's a, a, a yellow curry dip that they make. That um, if you mix these two together, it makes my favorite sauce. Now we didn't make this teriyaki sauce. Let me show you what we got for that. For the teriyaki sauce, we've got this. Now the first time we did this, we bought I think it was China King or Panda Express. Panda Express. Panda Express makes a sweet teriyaki. It was perfectly identical to what they do at Melting Pot, in my opinion. Yeah, this one's store, close, but not quite there. Out. But it's still delicious. But the store was out because of this pandemic crisis. So the next one is the, the curry sauce. It's made with sour cream, mayonnaise, curry, lemon. And then you also have the green, green dots. Goddess is fantastic on the vegetables. And what did you make that with? That is cream cheese, sour cream, garlic, green onions, uh, green onions onion powder. And that brings us to dinner. The meats. Chicken and steak for me. Lobster and, steak. and lobster and steak for Chris. Now, at the restaurant, they will tell you how long to cook. Um, at home, I'm I think we've got it. If it's boiling, I think you're about a minute and a half on the steak and two, two, two and a half minutes on the uh, oh, on the chicken. Spoon. Oh, we need a rescue spoon. You want to tell the funny story about the rescue spoon every time we go? So fortunately, we have a nice rubber <laughs> yeah. rescue spoon at home. And the funny thing when we go is every time we go, they tell us not to leave the spoon in here because they use like a, a metal, a uh, metal actually, pewter a or something pewter like something that. that. Fancy spoon, if you leave it in there, it gets hot. And every time we go, I leave the rescue spoon in there and then burn my hand getting it out. I think that's good. So you put the veggies in first, let them to cook for four or five minutes while you have a good time talking. Because a lot of times people go to a melting pot for their anniversary or, or birthday. It's more, it's mostly the experience of that. Mm -hmm. But after we did it last night, and a few times we've done seafood boil, we actually like the experience of doing it at home. Mm -hmm. It's lower cost, you can have exactly the amount of the different things you want, especially the desserts. You can mm -hmm. fix or have the exact thing you want. And we will get the dessert right after this. And I still think that we, we talk the same amount doing it at home as we do if we went to the melting pot. You probably talk more at home, don't you think? Yeah. Because we're preparing it and together. It, yeah, You're it's, cleaning up. It's work. Yeah, but it's <clears throat> we're still doing something together. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you know I'm the only one that's cooking everything. I help. Mm -hmm. I photograph. You photograph. I photograph. And you cut green onions. And tonight you cut the veggies and the bread. So yeah. Okay. So with the home kit. You get multiple different colors. When you're at Melting Pot, you'll, all of yours will be one solid color. You know which ones yours are. Mm -hmm. But this is kind of nice because you can remember exactly which meat you have on which color. If I paid attention. Yeah, if you pay attention. <laughs> I do not pay attention. And you I also don't it. want to, when you're cooking the meats, you don't want to go from the meats and to your plate. You want to go from the meats to the pot. Yes. And then put these on your plate and then eat with a fork. Yes. Yep, looks like we're good probably, to start cooking. The veggies probably have a few more minutes, but we can put yeah. our meats in there. I'm going to get a head Some start on the lobster. It's going to be all lobster. Huh? You're not going to do beef tonight at all? You're uh, I am, but I'm going to get this lobster. So that's the other thing about at home. She bought a bigger lobster, and <laughs> she's getting a lot more a, lobster. Yeah, there. it was a two-pack, and I did not realize how much meat was in that tail. Uh-oh. When we go to Melting Pot, we usually, we each have maybe one to two drinks and we get the four course meal together. We'll, we'll spend somewhere around $150, maybe $170, $180 with a tip yeah. um, when we go to Melting Pot. So we really, in one meal last night, probably spent less than that and that paid for the, mm -hmm. the unit. So tonight is, is all basically free since we didn't go to Melting Pot. Yep. Look at this lobster. I'm gonna drag you down. Lobster. Here at the bottom. Hope that you find me. See, I'm not good enough. And even in my wildest dreams, I didn't say.
Then I put another one. Put another one in there. And for dessert, when we go to melting pot. Always the same. Always the same. Chocolate peanut butter. I think there's a classic one, right? Mm -hmm. I think there's only been one time that we tried something yes. else. They should Jeremy. They should Jeremy. Peanut butter. Peanut butter jelly. True story. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. You don't feel like you're eating a lot of food, but by the time you're done with the horses, <clears throat> You feel like you ate a horse. Mm -hmm. And it usually starts sitting in about the end of the meats. The end. You don't think Yesterday it was barely even. Halfway through the meats. Yeah. That's why we had it a second night. Because we had so much meat left. Mushroom? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you. Because in there is a floating, oh, two oh, floating lobsters. Oh, oh. Yeah, spoon. Is that cauliflower? No. That's the lobster you're trying to get? Hey, don't be hitting mine. Hey, shut your face. Alright, no. Chocolate. We're just finishing up the meat, and then you start the chocolate. Uh, then you think that's good? <clears throat> yeah, probably so, because last night we were chocolate. Okay. So we've got the, what's the chocolate we're using tonight? This last time we used chocolate chips and we had trouble getting it to melt. Well, part of it, I believe, was because it was, the, the water, water was, was touching full. the, yeah. But she's doing the, uh... Godiva uh, milk chocolate, real yeah. melting chocolates. Awesome. There we go. We'll let that mm. melt and then put some peanut butter in it and then we'll move it to the, uh, we'll basically dump out the cooking style, fill it up with a little bit of water, just in the bottom, just enough to uh, get us a little bit of steam heat. As with the melting pot, this process is two, two and a half hours probably from the time you start, don't you think? Yes. And even when you're at the melting pot, it's a two hour, two and a half hour experience. You spend a lot more time at the table because you're not cleaning up and preparing the food, but like Chris and I were saying, we get to prepare the food together, so it's a nice, fun experience here in the kitchen for the two of us. And now we've got the chocolate melting. So on to the best part mm. yes. of the melting pot experience. Ooh, it's looking melty. Mm -hmm. for the peanut butter. It's not as dark as the chocolate in melting pot. Extra peanut buttery? Sure, extra peanut buttery is always so the answer. Two peanut butters? Sure, why not? Chunky peanut butter? Chunky peanut butter. And we got the Godiva milk chocolate this time. It's a little lighter than what the melting pot looked like. And then last night we had the chocolate chip, so that was the right color. And the, it seemed like the right flavor too, didn't it? it yeah, it was just probably chips. because I. The water was touching the pan. Uh -huh. uh, that'd be great. Put a little bit of water in the pot here. You don't want to get too much where it hits the bottom of the insert because that will mess up the cooking style or the cooking process, right?
Chris is finishing up chocolate peanut butter on the stove and then she's going to bring that insert over here put it in there we've got it nice and boiling and steaming so it'll stay hot when it gets here and this is perhaps the most rewarding part of doing it at home so if you're at melting pot you get a couple of rice crispy treats they're not peanut butter rice crispy treats we make them peanut butter at home you get some brownies you get some cheesecake you get some bananas you get some strawberries um, some little, um, I think, short shortcake, shortcake or pound cake, chocolate, or chocolate chip cookie type thing or something. Yeah. But you only get a couple of each of those. So if these are your favorite, like ours are the cheesecake, the Rice Krispies, the brownies, and the strawberries. We can have as many as we want, and uh, we're probably not going to make a dent in this. But if we wanted to, we could. So it's fantastically de delicious to do this at home for this reason right here and melting pot tip or fondue tip number one actually probably number two number one was don't leave the rescue spoon in there number two is for the cheese and for the chocolate mm. as you get closer to the bottom it's going to get lava hot lava hot cool. <laughs> I almost had the rice crispy treats. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, it's much better consistency than last night. Not quite as dark because we got milk chocolate, but the consistency is perfect. Take a bite. <laughs> bite it. Bite the brownie. You can do it. You Stop can do it. it. <laughs> All right. Two nights in a row. I feel kind of fat. <laughs> you always feel full. We were discussing whether it's really because you eat too much food or if it's just because it's like a two, two and a half hour process from the time you start eating till you finish. I How really think that it's just the slow eating. I think it's the slow I eating. Like the time. Your body tells you you're full faster. Until now. Oh. <laughs> we recommend you try it. So whether you do it melting pot style or whether you do it fondue style or whether you do it big seafood boil style, um, the the meats are always delicious, um, but when you do it melting pot fondue style, you get the cheese sauce and you get the chocolate dessert. So we will probably do most of ours unless we're doing it for a large group of people mm -hmm. using our new 22nd anniversary Cuisinart fondue pot. Yep. True. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs>